Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I will be making wall art with Aquacast water-based eco resin from Elikem Resins. I will be experimenting with the best curing time to have between layers to ensure that all pieces bond together. I'll be using my new wall art moulds from Moulds and Shapes in this video and this video is also a collaboration so there will be three other artists doing a similar kind of video with similar moulds so be sure to check my video description to see their videos as well. Moulds and Shapes will be giving away one of their wall art moulds to one lucky viewer from each of the artists in the collaboration, so be sure to check the entry rules at the end of the video. If all that sounds like fun, stay tuned and enjoy the video! This is the first mould I will be using today. As always, it feels very heavy and really good quality, as I expect from moulds and shapes now. And this one is matte. It's designed to be used with eco resins. You could use it with epoxy resin, but you wouldn't get a shiny finish. Before I could begin my wall art, I needed to think about how it would be attached to the wall when it was completed. So I decided to make a wire loop which could be added into the aquacast a little bit later on so that it was cast with the aquacast and all parts of the finished piece and that way I knew it would be nice and secure. So I took some copper wire, it doesn't have to be copper, it just happens to be what I had and it's 0.8 millimetres and I cut a strip of 15 centimetres. I measured the depth of the mould from the height where the aquacast will be when my loop is added later on. So I then cut the 15 centimetres of the wire and bent it around a marker pen to create the loop shape. Whilst the pen was still in the wire, I grabbed the wire with my long nose pliers while the pen was still in there to make sure I had an accurate size for the loop and then bent the loop part at 90 degrees whilst holding it with my pliers. What I was doing was creating a step so that it can be sat in the aquacast and the loop can protrude out the surface of the aquacast. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here, making a step. And I just need to measure it to make sure it's the same depth as the part of the mould that I measured earlier. It will all make sense soon. It's kind of hard to explain. Really, I could have just not said anything at all and let you just watch. But seeing as you're watching anyway, I might as well talk to you, eh? Stop you getting lonely. <laughs> so once I'd marked the measurements, I held it with the pliers again and bent it once more at 90 degrees. So at this stage, you can probably get an idea of what my plan was and you can see the step and how it's going to rest in the aquacast with those long bits of wire. But I don't want to just leave them long like that. So give them some balance and to make sure it all sits nicely on the surface of my cured aquacast later on, I needed to just bend those long bits of wire around so just give it some stability and that will help it to lock into the aquacast nicely as well and stay there forever. So there it is, more like a double U now, isn't it? So with that done, let's get on with making the wall art. Oh, and while I remember, one more thing before I do start the wall art. I marked the mould at the halfway point so it was clear where to put the hook later on. And that way I knew my picture would hang straight. My first job was to add some glitter to the squares. I'm using light pink shell glass glitter from Laura's Art Corner and I'm just scooping some out and adding them to the square part of the mould. 
I then moved it around with a brush to get an even distribution. I didn't want it to be piled up because I would get big pockets of air trapped in it and I was trying not to do that. I wanted a single layer stuck to the surface of the silicon. And once I'd done that first one, I repeated the process with the second. So this is going to have three layers, this first mould. I'm not, I'm not going to do layers on the second one. The second one will be very straightforward. But for this one, I wanted to try layering the Aquacast as a bit of an experiment, really, because I know that Aquacast and any other eco resin can be a bit difficult when it comes to pouring separate layers on top of each other. They sometimes don't want to stick to each other. And so I wanted to experiment with that today. So I'd already worked out how much of the powder and water I would need for each layer and I will put those on the screen. I filled the mould in separate layers with water and used the Aquacast calculator. But I'll put the measurements on the screen anyway because maybe you'll decide to get this mould and it will make life a lot easier for you. So once I'd finished giving my Aquacast a really good mix, it was time to add some pigment. The pigment I will be using is Autumn Bark from Homeware Design Co on Etsy and I will put a link in the video description along with everything else. And these pigments are designed to be used specifically with eco resins. I wanted to go with a neutral colour scheme for my wall art today because I wanted it to go into my dining room. The main colour in my dining room on the walls is dark blue and I didn't want to try and match that. I wanted to go with the other colour that's in there which is like a ochre colour on, on some of the walls and then I've got wood in there as well. So I decided to go with the ochre and the wood to try and complement that and that's why I chose this colour. So I just kept adding a little bit of colour at a time until I was happy with it and then it was time to pour. So my plan with this wall art was to pour the first layer, leave it to cure just for an hour so that it was actually even still warm when I added a layer on top and in my mind, that was how it would adhere to each other best, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I didn't want it to be fully cured before adding a layer on top of it. We'll see what happens. So, like I said, with this layer, I just waited an hour. Right, so we're jumping forward an hour in time and I've already mixed my Aquacast this time. I didn't see the need to let make you watch all that again. <laughs> so yeah, I've mixed up my Aquacast. I'm adding just a touch of the pigment and I'm going for a marbled effect on this second layer. And so I'm just giving it a tiny little mix before pouring it in. So make a little mental note to yourself at this stage. This was after an hour of curing with that first layer. Um, yeah, <laughs> you'll see why soon. So yeah, you can see the marble effect forming there already. And so let's fast forward through that because I've got a lot to show you today. This is just the first one. Right, mental note time again. That layer was left for two hours to cure. As I said before, this is a bit of an experiment. I wanted to try two different curing times and then if anything fell to bits later on, <laughs> I would know which curing time worked best, you know, which stage to add the next layer. And so we'll see what happens soon. For the final layer, I'm making it a little bit darker and adding more of the bark pigment. And this was the final layer, so it was nice and simple. All I had to do was pour it in and fill it up and give it a move around until there were no gaps in there. I also banged my um, levelling table a little bit to make sure that there were no air pockets in there. That's something I should have mentioned before. I'm working on a levelling table, which of course is useful for keeping the whole thing level, but it also makes it nice and easy to move it around, give it a bang and release any air bubbles. 
and once I'd finished banging it around it was time to add the hook and the place where I'd planned to put the hook means that it's going to be placed on top of a layer of cured aquacast so it's not sinking right down to the bottom of the silicon it's sinking on top of the aquacast so I know that the wire won't show through the front of the wall art. So once that was cured, it was time to take it out of the mould and see if it was all in one piece or to see if any of it had fallen off. Let's have a look. <laughs> Can you see it? Yep. Ta-da! We've got a piece missing. So, I've learned something. That first piece was left for one hour before I added that marbled layer and it didn't stick. But the layer where I left it for two hours, that did stick. So there's a lesson learned there. And don't worry, I just stuck it back on with PVA glue and you would never know that it had ever fallen off. So it's actually not a problem. But yeah, I learned something with this one. Leave it for two hours and it seems to be okay. That being said, it doesn't mean it will always be the case. If you're making something like a jar with lots of layers and you leave each one two hours and then try and demold it, that might not work because you're putting it under more pressure to demold it. This came out nice and easy and you were, I wasn't putting it under any pressure. So it's, it still needs some, you know, playing around with and practicing. Anyway, it's looking good, isn't it? I'm really liking it. I love the marbled part. That looks really good. But when you're using glitter on your base, you know, on your mould with Aquacast, a lot of it does get covered up by the Aquacast and you really need to sand it afterwards. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using a buffing block, which is for doing your nails. And I always find that those work really well with Aquacast. It's quite fine. And yeah, as you can see, the, it's starting to shine a lot more already. The next day when it was fully cured, it was time to seal it and make those colours really come to life. Oh, and I've stuck the other square on as well. So I wanted to leave the PVA a day to be completely stuck. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere now. So let's get some wax on. I use Clark's wax for stone and concrete. You, if you've watched any of my other Aquacast videos, you'll know that that's what I always love to use. I love it so much, the pot's nearly empty. <laughs> I need to get some more. But as you will see quite quickly, the colours really start to come to life when you add the wax. And I'm just rubbing it in with a microfiber cloth. When I had finished applying all the wax to the front and the sides, I flipped it over and sealed the back as well. I'm going to be using my laser engraver to put something on the back, which you'll see in a moment. I've got a new laser engraver and I was quite excited about that. And I wanted to try it out on the back of the artwork. And yeah, it was really good. But the thing with it is that you've got to seal it before you engrave it. Because if you en if you put the wax on after you've engraved it, it kind of disappears. You the color darkens and you don't see the engraving. So yeah, that's the reason why at this stage I was doing the back as well. So are you ready for a bit of magic? Well, I think it's magic. I'm going to show you it being engraved with my X Tool F1 engraver. Let's have a look. So this is sped up a lot because it's really not as quick as this in real life. I think it took about two or three minutes. But yeah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Isn't it great? I'm so pleased with that machine. And so, yeah, you probably saw the video last week. And yeah, it's brilliant. Wow, look at that. Doesn't that bring a new dimension to the artwork? I love that on the back. Anyway... That's that one finished. Let's do the second one. This one is my second mould from Moulds and Shapes, which is also a matte one. And I'm going to do everything 
kind of the same, the same colours but just in one pour this time. And I'm going to zip through it because this video is starting to get quite long and you don't want to see everything all over again. So I'm going to show you the main points and then we'll see the finished piece. So as you can see here, I'm just adding the glitter again. Then I'm adding the hooks. It's going to be different this time. This one needed two hooks because it's not a symmetrical design. And if I added a hook in the middle, I knew it wouldn't hang straight. It just, yeah, it would just be completely off center and wonky and all of that. So I added one on each corner. I'm taping it to a ruler and the ruler is going to be just put over the top so that the hooks can be suspended in the aqua cast and pouring it all in one layer so there would have been nothing solid to attach them to and that's why I'm suspending them on the ruler which I thought was quite a cool idea I was quite you know I was giving myself a pat on the back <laughs> with this idea and yeah that worked really well so let's add the aqua cast so i mixed up enough to fill the full mold but to start with i did the marbled effect again i actually think with hindsight that i added too much pigment there i got a bit carried away and put too much in but yeah i'm pouring the first part as a marbled layer and the reason i went for that was because because I'm doing it all in one pour, I knew there was a chance that the colours would merge together. So, for instance, if I'd just done white for this and then poured dark on top of it while it was, you know, all in one go, the colours might merge a bit and it would look a bit messy. So this way I thought we could have a little bit of contrast, but then if it's got the marbled effect in it, it won't matter too much if the dark brown, which I'm putting in next, mixed with it a bit. Does that make sense? That was, <laughs> I think it does. That was the reason why I did it. So once that was all in, I added more pigment to the remaining aqua cast and poured that in. I tried to pour onto the mould rather than onto the wet aqua cast. I didn't want to make it flood over before the mould was, you know, covered. And that way I hoped that I would get the contrast and the plain aqua cast for the background and the marbled aqua cast in the foreground. So that's why I'm carefully just going around the edges first. And then once all the silicon was covered, I didn't mind just pouring the rest on any old way. So when it was all in, I took my ruler with the loops attached and placed it on top. I needed to bend the wire a little bit to make sure it was completely in the aqua cast because the mould wasn't quite filled up to the top, but then that was done. So let's have a look to see how this one turned out. So at first glance, I wasn't massively happy with it. There wasn't much contrast and there were a lot of little bubble holes where there'd been bubbles around the glitter. Couldn't see the glitter, but don't you worry, we'll sort it out. I gave it a good sanding and I won't show you all of that. But once I'd given it a good sanding, that really helped. And then I sealed the background with the wax but I didn't seal the foreground and that way I was able to get some contrast back and once I'd finished sealing it it really was transformed the thing with the wax is it does darken it but as when it dries more it will fade a little bit it won't stay as dark as the wax makes it unfortunately but it really did help and so here we have them in place on the wall in my dining room and I think they look really nice. I loved my two moulds from the wall art range from Moulds and Shapes and I can't wait to see what everyone else got. And that brings us on to the giveaway and how you can enter. Moulds and shapes do ship to most places all around the world, but there are a handful of places they don't ship to. So all you need to do to enter is tell me your country of residence in the comments. That's all you have to do. The giveaway winner will be chosen at random. 
I will congratulate you in a reply to your comment and ask you to choose your wall art mould from Moulds and Shapes, contact them and I will have already given them your name so they'll know who you are and then tell them which mould you would like and they will ship it to you. Beware of scammers who always raise their head when there's giveaway in the title. They will come to the comments section, I'm sure, and tell you that you've won and tell you to click a link or tell you to give details. Don't do it. Even if it looks like me, they do sometimes imitate me. You will be told to contact Moulds and Shapes if you are the winner and that's all you have to do. The winner's name will be drawn at random next Saturday the 15th of June and that will be the day you will be informed if you have won. So entering is nice and simple. Right next up in the collaboration is Petra's video. Please find her link in my video description and go along and see what wonderful things she has to make. She is absolutely amazing. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Please check out the links and discount codes in the video description. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and subscribe if you would like to. And I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching and bye for now.